Hey everyone, welcome back to Alchemy with Zero Phase. This is Eric. And in this video, we are going to be talking about some new in-painting models that I don't think are getting the attention that they need. A lot of us are still using the 1.5 in-painting models, and a lot of that's due to the frustration that with the 2.0, 2.1 models, in-painting models that, you know, they work, but people just didn't latch on to the 2.0 one or 2.0 models in general. And so just because the 1.5 models, uh, checkpoints got trained really well. They do a lot of good things that are really well that uh, that people just stuck with them. So I mean, I think I saw a survey one time of how many people are still using 1.5 models versus like the 2.1 and, and SDXL models. And there's still the majority of people, people using uh, the 1.5 models. Uh, granted that was a little while ago, but so what I want to do is introduce you to uh, some new in-painting models, and these are based off of SDXL. Now, a while ago, um, I don't know how many months ago, several months ago, um, uh, they did release a SDXL in-painting model, but it did not work. Like, I don't know, I, I tried getting it working myself, could never get it to function, it just kept throwing an error in the interface. Now I think that threw a lot of people off, got very frustrating, and for the longest time nobody else created an in-painting in model. Now a while ago Juggernaut did actually create, uh, or you know, uh, there was an in-painting model built off of uh, Juggernaut, and it was called the V9RD Photo 2 in-painting model, and it actually works pretty good. Uh, that's been my go-to now for a while because I work strictly in SDXL models. Uh, but since then, they've updated to their new Juggernaut, uh, what was it, version X? Yeah, version X in-painting model. And there are two other in-painting models. We have an uh, Animat Animagine XL in-painting and Dream Shaper XL, yes, you read that right, Lightning in-painting. And we're just going to go through, demonstrate each one, and uh, show that they do work that they produce great in-painting without any seams. And I'll walk you through that. So I've already downloaded all but the Animagine XL in-painting. Let me, you know, let me grab that one real quick. Just so we have it, we'll run through all three. Okay, so I just downloaded the, and it's validating here, that model. I'm using Stability Matrix to manage my models. It interfaces with Civit AI and Hugging Face, and I just did a search for it, found it here, and imported it. So, uh, great way to manage your stuff. Uh, for those of you using Stability Matrix, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't started using Stability Matrix, you really should look into it. It's a great way to manage your packages uh, and being able to use different platforms, whether it's Stable Diffusion Forge, regular Web UI, Comfy UI, or Focus, or there's a bunch of others too. So, we now have um, all three of these models. Now we're going to come over here into Stable Diffusion. I am using um, uh, the Forge Edition. It's my favorite. It's fast. Works really well. Um, we're going to switch over to my over to the Realities Edge XL Lightning model, which I love using. And then we're going to switch over to a portrait preset. And uh, you know, I don't think I need to change much. Man, I'm going to go ahead and increase the steps on this a little bit. Let's go ahead and get a description here. Let's just do a, um, uh, uh, let's, I don't know, illustration, photo. Let's do a f photography of a woman sitting in a bar dressed in a cocktail dress holding a glass of wine. You know what? Let's get some, let's get a couple, a bunch of different prompts here on that just to make sure we get some variety on that. Grab those. We've already got our presets, so let's just drop this into the script here. The prompts from file or text box. Paste those in there. And we are, I want to work at, now the preset I'm pretty sure is 9 by 16. Let's just make sure that that's right. Yep, and render it here. Okay, 
So we have some images here. Let's just go ahead and take a look at these. You know, one of the biggest things, biggest problems that you know any stable diffusion model has is hands and really any AI model. Some are trained better than others. There were some good 1.5 models that did great hands. And as you see, most of these have uh, issues with hands. So and I, somebody asked me to see how we could improve that. Uh, and I'm going to be honest with you. In painting hands is mostly nothing but a crapshoot. So I'm going to say, honestly, if you want to improve hands, you know, as you see, like this one looks fairly well. The pinky's a little small. Obviously, the fingernails and everything a little weird. Uh, I'm going to say the one thing you want to try is under a detailer, uh, which is not just for faces, but has models for hands as well as whole persons. And if we select hand and we go back and let's re-render this. I'm actually going to increase the config scale on this. It'll give a little more color, pop a little bit more. Uh, what it will do is it'll actually find the hands in there and it will do a slight in-painting on them, giving them more detail and improving things like the fingernails and um, sometimes the overall shape of the hand too. So give it a second to go through these. So as you can see, um, obviously this, this pointy finger looks a little weird, but you can see it improved the fingernails overall on that. Um, I'm not seeing a, you know, the, the, the index finger on that one, but uh, whatever. Uh, but each one looks better in the sense that um, the, like the fingernails look more natural. Everything looks a little more natural on it. Uh, I'm not going to say it's the absolute fix-all, but it definitely improves things uh, when it comes to overall hand quality. So really my recommendation to you is if you can render the image um, and get the hands right the first time, or at least mostly right, using the A detailer to get that right, do it. Because in painting, as I'm going to show you, hands is very, very difficult um, and is almost impossible to get corrected. So we're going to grab this one right here. We're going to try in painting these hands and we'll try in painting some other things too. So let's flip this over to our in painting section. Give it a second to drop that image in there. And what we're going to do, since we're focused on hands, let's grab these hands here. Let's just mask this out. Okay. And what we're going to do is give it some context here. Let's switch over to one of the end painting models. Let's use the Juggernaut. Oops. We're going to use the version X in paint. It's the latest version. And what we're going to tell it in the description is a uh, woman's hand holding a wine glass. I don't know if that needs to be fixed or not, but okay. Um, I'm not going to worry about a negative prompt. We're just going to see what we can do with this. So with in-painting, uh, we are working at a higher res, but we're working with a small area here. I'm not going to worry about the mask blur because these in-painting models actually work. Um, we're going to do only mask. We're going to change the only mask padding to give it more context. So we're going to actually bring this up quite a bit. We're going to go to, let's go to 60. Eh, let's go to 72. And sampling steps, this is not a lightning model, so uh, we are going to increase the sampling steps to about 30. Right, where? 31. We need this to be, I want this to be a one by one. Uh, it is an XL model, so we're going to be working at 1024 by 1024. I want a couple different versions, so we're going to choose two different variants. Config scale needs to be at seven. Again, we're not working with a lightning model. I'm gonna put it seven. You can go anywhere six to eight, whatever. Denoise strength, yeah, that's fine. We can leave it at that. Uh, if you like the overall like aesthetic of the hand and we're just trying to give it a better look, we can actually drop this down to like 0.65 and try that. Okay, so let's go ahead and generate and see what it gives us. Again, this is not the lightning model. Uh, it is the standard SDXL model, so it is going to be a little slower to render. 
Oh, you know one thing we should turn on though. Uh, if we do get a good hand, it'd be nice if a detailer uh, swooped in and helped fix the overall aesthetic here. But let's just take a look and see what we got. See, like that one's not bad, except if you look at this closely, you can see her finger on the other side. So she's got one too many fingers, which is pretty common with STXL, unfortunately. So let's go ahead with the A detailer enabled. Let's redo that. But as you can see, and I'll show you here, what I mean is that uh, it blended that beautifully in the sense there's no seam around the unpainted area. Yeah, I mean, a detailer does what it can. It's more about just fixing fingernails and stuff like that unless you turn up the in painting on it, but even then it has a hard time with it. <laughs> so the biggest thing I want to point out here is that you don't have a seam. Okay, it blends that beautifully, meaning that in painting model works well. So let's switch over to a different in painting model and try doing this again. Let's do uh, a Let's do the Dream Shaper XL. Refresh to get that other one, the one we just downloaded to, to make sure it's in the list. Okay, and then let's go ahead and generate on that. This may take a second, it's got to switch over models. Yeah, well, that actually isn't too bad. Let's see what Impaint the uh, A Detailer does with it. It is interesting, it didn't quite grab this over here, only saw this part here, but I mean, that would actually be, that one's usable right there. That one's not bad. It's kind of kind of funky third fingernail there, but. Again, you know, these fingers are just messed up in, in general. But that one looks bad. You could actually, it looks pretty good. You could actually work with that. Okay, again, no seam. Um, this was the, uh, lightning model so theoretically we could not theoretically uh, we can actually reduce sampling steps down on this let's go down to eight let's take the config scale down to three i believe the um this particular model does work pretty good at thing uh config scales above two and below three so you know we do 2.5 let's actually increase the denoise strength on this and I don't know if we need to, but let's switch this over to the turbo versions of Euler A. We're going to leave the padding. I don't know. Let's just bring the padding down. Let's see what it does. That reduces the amount of context that the AI has to work with, but I think it should still be big enough to uh, give us what we want. Interesting. I mean, we're getting the four fingers plus the thumb and, you know, not much of anything else. Again, hands are hard. Not going to not gonna lie. So let's do something a little more fun. We're working with a lightning and painting model. Let's do something a little more drastic. So red dress, let's see if we can change this to purple or something. So let's erase whatever we have. Change this mask size up here. Let's just grab that. Let's change the dress color. Maybe even the dress type. Okay, so let's do a um, elegant lacy purple cocktail dress. And let's do woman wearing. Okay, and it's got context of where the legs are, where the arms are, and everything else. I don't think we're going to need to modify much of anything else here. So let's let's just take a look at this and see what it does. Yeah, <laughs> I forgot to shut off a detailer. Changed her to an alien hand. That's not bad. And what's interesting, I think this one here, it actually improved that hand there. But but we did get slightly what we wanted. It's still a little red. It's not quite the vivid purple. Maybe that's what I'm doing. Lacey. Prompting works great. Colors work better when you give them a preparatory descriptor. 
meaning vivid purple or vibrant purple, something like that. Uh, we'll try that, but I'm also going to increase the denoise strength and give it a little more ability to change what's in there. We're going to shut off a detail. I don't care about that right now. Still, yeah, still just a little too red. Something we can do about that. Oh, there we go. That's a bit more purple. That one's still red, but this one, let's see. Yeah, that one's red. That one turned out more purple. So one thing we can do is change, um, you know, something I should point out. Again, we are getting a great blend here where uh, there's no seam. Uh, it, we are kind of overlapping the table. You know, we can actually do this and overlap a little bit more of certain areas. And it blends it nicely. So let's bring that in there like that, just to show you that it can accommodate that really well. And I am going to really emphasize this. We're going to select the whole cocktail dress and really emphasize that. Get that purple dress in there. So it's definitely got, still got a little bit of red. As you see, it gave her straps on that one. Because I, I impainted more over the that, but it, you see how it, uh, the arm is, it has no seam on it, and I overlapped the arm. So these models do work really well. Whether you're getting the right color or not, we're gonna try just doing a fill. Increase the denoise strength. And using a, yeah, that's what I thought. It does a much better job with that. It's not using the original image. So that worked really well. Again, in painted beautifully. No seam at all. Like, looks great. So the other one, I think, was the, let's go back here, was the Animagine XL in painting. Let's uh, just do a quick try on that one. Come up here, I believe it's that one right there. And we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to leave it the same here. But uh, with this one, it's not a lightning model. So we're going to increase the steps to 30. It tends to work better with higher steps. Change this back over to regular Euler A. And config scale, bring it back up to 7. And let's run that one. This one's definitely a little different. It did okay. It definitely gave us some different looking dresses. And I'm wondering if it could be this model is trained for something specific. Yeah, it looks like it's trained more for cartoons. And I wonder if that may be it. Hmm. i have to give that a try. Again, it did a good job blending it. Um, there are no seams. Obviously, there's some shape weirdness, and, and the aesthetic just kind of looks a little cartoony in this one, but that may be the model itself. So there you go. Um, definitely try these out. I think they're going to work better for those who are using SDXL models to do their image rendering uh, and getting the proper aesthetic. So the Juggernaut in painting model and the, uh, I think it was the... Uh, the Dream Shaper XL Lightning in painting model, great models, especially if you're looking to do it quick in painting. That Lightning model is effective; like it works great, as you can see. I hope this was helpful. I hope this was informative. Uh, if you like it, you know, like the video, subscribe to my channel. Uh, I'm trying to do videos uh, on things that people want to know about, whether it's in painting, character development, or other things. If you have suggestions, leave them in the comments, and uh, we'll talk to you later.